Welcome to another exciting episode from Marvelous Videos. In Vaulted Halls Entombed, the third season of Love, Death, and Robots tackles a hostage situation in its eighth episode, but the short is equal parts thriller and horror, with some great use of the science fiction and eldritch elements. Titled In Vaulted Halls Entombed, this masterpiece of an episode was directed by Jerome Chen and is based on a story by Alex Baxter. Set in the middle of nowhere, the story revolves around a special force team whose mission is to track down a hostage and retrieve them from a bunch of terrorists. They locate the hostage in a mysterious cave and enter the same to finish their search and rescue mission. But something fiendish lies hidden in that cave, something so ancient that no man alive has seen it, and those unfortunate few Whoever set their eyes on this mysterious entity were left unhinged. In Vaulted Halls Entombed comes with an ending that leaves the viewer scratching their heads for an explanation. But more importantly, the episode makes the viewer want more. In this video, we will explore this thrilling short filled with love, death, and robots before diving deep into the ending's explanation. Let's begin, shall we? Oh, and by the way, beware of the spoilers. Before we go into our explanation, we have a small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Love, Death, and Robots Season 3 Episode 8 Recap the episode starts with a special forces team tracking down rebels to retrieve a hostage they were holding captive. Amidst the rocky terrain, the soldiers have their friendly banters, but are well aware of their objective. As the team's leader, Sergeant Coulthard, radios his base, the captors take the hostage into a cave. After receiving the green light from the base, Coulthard and his unit head toward the dark cave in silence. While inside the cave, Coulthard orders his men to only use infrared so that the enemies don't get alarmed. Oh man, I'm point. One beam, no white light. Everyone go goggles. The team of young soldiers continued with their banter, probably as a gimmick to ease the tension, but the humor was about to fade into nothingness. They were about to experience the most horrific events of their life, and not everyone was going to walk out alive from this cave. As the crews moved further into the depths of the cave, the team's medic, Harper, found a green, gooey substance dripping through the cave walls. What is it? Some sort of lichen. But that was not the shocking part. The part came when they witnessed a freshly dead corpse of someone with a dog tag. It turned out that this corpse was their mission, the hostage. Moving further in, they find more such corpses. These appeared to be the captors. But the special forces unit saw these guys going into the cave moments ago, so how is it that the captors and their hostages face such a terrible fate? Well, their questions were answered when a swarm of deadly bioorganic cockroach-like creatures attacked them. The team opened fire on the thousands of these alien creatures, but they didn't have enough bullets. It wasn't long before that the swarm devoured the soldiers one by one, until only Spencer, Harper, and Coulthard remained alive. The trio made a run for their lives and found themselves inside an ancient structure, with massive steps and a tomb dedicated to an eldritch god. From the center of the structure came a voice that was no louder than soft chanting. They realized that the mission was heavily compromised and their chances of survival were dwindling by the minute. The soldiers soon find an opening on the other side of the structure. This could have led them to the surface. However, the situation worsened further as another swarm of alien creatures attacked them. These were bioorganic like the previous swarm, but instead of cockroaches, this swarm consisted of large spidery creatures. They managed to fall back a short distance, but the carnivorous spidery aliens devour Spencer. However, this gave Harper and and Coulthard enough time to escape from the spot. The voice coming from the center of the structure was more prominent now and was attracting Coulthard toward the tomb. It was calling out to Coulthard so that he could free the creature. Towards the end of the episode, Coulthard and Harper find themselves within a crypt of sorts. It housed this magnificently huge creature bound by chains and waiting for its freedom. The alien creature the two of them found seemed to represent Cthulhu, the eldritch god created by H.P. Lovecraft. The creature soon started talking to the soldiers, and Coulthard falls for the trap. The Cthulhu-like creature mind-controlled the sergeant who used his only grenade to try and free the monstrous being. However, Harper realized what was happening, and she not only stopped him from freeing the creature, but shot Coulthard dead. In a brief eye contact that Harper made with the creature, 
she saw premonitions of the creature destroying all of Earth. It seemed that Harper was initially able to resist the mind control, but the monstrous beast tried his tricks once again. The creators didn't elaborate on what Harper did next, but the scene got cut and opened outside the cave. It seems that Harper gouged her own eyes out with a knife and was walking aimlessly on the surface all the way, chanting something in an alien language. Ending explained. What happened to Harper? It seems Harper realized that staring into the monster's eyes leads to mind control, and she was mentally strong enough to create a mental barrier between herself and the Cthulhu-like creature. She was well aware of how the creature could lead to the destruction of Earth, and not obeying its command was indispensable. It had been rightfully caged for numerous tens of thousands of years, and it was important that Harper didn't secure its release. However, defying the commands of the ancient eldritch gods is tougher than you and I can imagine. This could be the reason why that she gouged her eyes out. Well, no eyes, no mind control through staring. Having said that, it doesn't mean that Harper walked out of the cave in good mental shape. She seemed to have lost her mind and was repeating some alien words while walking out of the giant tomb. It would have been nice to see if she lived to see another day, in a manner of speaking, given she blinded herself. Or maybe she faced a fate worse than death. That was all in this video, but don't forget to check out our other videos on Season 3 of Love, Death, and Robots. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe.